So it's straight from here. If you are not too much, so that means if you have questions, then it might be also possible that we can just get this past questions in between. So what we are going to do today? So after a short introduction and uh, motivation, what web three messaging is and how we can use it for our work. I want to go into the D3 protocol to show you how this decentralized protocol is working. So this is an open source, full public good protocol, so everyone can use it. Everyone can use it in the in our applications, more to connect other protocols to it. Then we want to go a little bit about a benefit. This is a part of the protocol which is an easy way to integrate simple messaging fully included with secure different applications. But I will show you how we can do this with one single line of React code so that you have full messaging in your application. Yeah, we do some programming tests by ourselves so everyone can test it and yeah, then I will summarize what we have. So when we talk about messaging, we have to go back to the very early days of the internet. So the beginning of the 1970s, when the internet started up in the as a communication network, the first email was sent. So this was a kind of revolution. So it was possible to send messages across the world without any money in between, but it's only on the wire. So it was a kind of decentralized, or it was decentralized, we had a different service for submitting the messages. It was fully unencrypted because at this time encryption was kind of a military event. It was not available for normal people. So yeah, and yeah, you can see email was the first real killer application of it. So now everyone knows email. We will talk about the adventure and this adventure later. So then now about 15 Almost 20 years ago, the area of the message was started. So a little bit earlier, we had these messages based on the internet, so like ICQ, URL, Messenger, and so on. And then we, uh, we had these messenger based on the smartphone, which started to replace the SMS uh, communication. So and these are nice messengers. So in the beginning, also most of the Communication was unencrypted. Now, nowadays, it's almost all big messenger have encrypted messaging. But we also see that in a lot of applications, we have messaging components. Uh, almost every important website has some messaging in there. Like social media, like Twitter, uh, WhatsApp, or Facebook, and so on, they have included messaging. But also, company sites really have a chat that you can contact the, the company and so on. And even now, if encryption is more common, you have a lot of these internal messengers which are still unencrypted. Uh, even even uh, Twitter, or now X, some months ago, it was unencrypted messaging. I don't know if they already have fully encrypted messaging, but yeah, it was also in this time that uh, it was not it is not coming for all these managed components. And one thing we have with all of these managed solutions we, we are using now, they are centralized services. These are services operated by one big company in, in the most cases. The data are completely siloed and controlled by this company, and there's absolutely no interoperability. Now, if you are using one manager, you cannot send a message to another. So now we are starting into a new area of messaging, we call it the Web3 messaging, which is able to uh, deliver full sterile secure messaging for all. But when we look into the Web3 messaging world today, we see we are not yet at a point where it works how it should work. One reason is that most of these solutions we have now in the Web3 space are still siloed solutions. They have different protocols, they have different 
services behind it, even if they are using Web3 technology for security, they are not yet connected. And to have a real working Web3 messaging world, we need it all. It's absolutely essential. Right? We have small communities with nice messaging solutions, but to become really successful, we need it all. So what are now the problems I have mentioned, most of them? Encryption, email, no encryption at all. I don't know who of you tried to receive encrypted emails. So I did send my public key with my emails for years. You can guess how many encrypted messages I received. You don't need one hand and no fingers. Not a single email I received as an encrypted email. Even if I published my my public key. Privacy is also a very important topic. If it's not encrypted, of course, there are no privacy. Uh, sending something by email is I'm putting someone, something on a wall. Yeah. Theoretically, everyone could read it. But even if you look at the messaging world where we have end to end encryption, privacy is not given there. The privacy for, for the content, yes, but not for the for the transitional meeting data. The, the provider knows who is managing whom at which time. So here we need an improvement as well. Self-sorting if you have a managing service and you want to move your message to another, you will have some problems because like, you are not the one who controls the managers. It's the provider in most cases. Yeah, you know, probably I already mentioned that you cannot send a message from WhatsApp to Telegram. It's not possible for now. And you cannot do this actually in some of the new messaging services as well. So that's a real topic we have to discuss. Centralization and single point of failure. We see these big messaging services, sometimes they fail. And surely, even the biggest ones in the last 12 months, there was some hours downtime, no messaging for the and, and, and if I'm blocked for one reason ever, from such a service, they control my identity. If they block me, I'm disconnected to all my communications. Yeah, and last but not least, spam. All of us know what spam is. In email world, it's the, the most messages are spamming. Fortunately, there are some filter mechanisms now which uh, select and unselect some messages. This works good or not good. Depends on the provider, depends on the type of message. So my input, what my inbox is, even if I use a lot of spam filters, full of spam messages. And sometimes good messages are on the spam folder. And it's a, it's a real topic, which is really hard to solve with that cool technology. With uh, free technology, we can do a lot to make it easy to prevent spam senders from sending it. Yeah, so what can Web3 uh, can do better than we have in Web2? So first of all, everything we are doing is keys. So I have keys, and I can derive from these keys, encryption keys. So it's, it's nothing I have to reinvent. We have it in Web3, and we can use it. Sensoring is something we have in our ethos. We want to have the people having the control over their Data or whatever. Eh? The same which is valid for coins, not your keys, not your coins, is valid for messages. Not your keys, not your communication. Decentralization, one important part of this conference, is absolutely essential. The user has to decide which infrastructure he wants to connect. There must be no middleman which controls it. So that we don't have anything but it fails. Encryption privacy, I don't need to mention. This is something which is common standard, it must be implemented, it must be available. One point we learned in the field world is that diversity is something really good. Right? We learned it from, from the client blockchain, we have different implementations, different version. it is good for stability. And when we look to managing, then we have it's also very good. So we have a lot of different communities, we can build message solutions focused on these communities, and yet, 
I don't need, when the, if I'm not an NFT guy, I don't need a manager which focuses on NFTs. But I want maybe to communicate with someone who is in this community. And to my cell phone contains a lot of message information at the same time to be able to connect to uh, these uh, to other people. So this is something that we need to change. Everyone should be able to select what message information is best for him or her, and then be able to communicate with others. Yeah, the spam protection I mentioned, we have good ways in Web3 to, uh, yeah, to prevent people from sending spam. So what is really essential from all of these points? First, we need a registry for the information we need for secure communication. These are privately, uh, not privately, you know, public keys for the, for the encryption and also for signatures. These are information about how to deliver messages. And we need a decentralized network where we can uh, uh, send messages to so that we don't have centralized and service in between. And we need to know how to And with this, these three points, uh, these are essential for web 3 messaging. So what is the DM3 protocol? We, we started with DM3 protocol about one and a half year before. It was an initiative to build a solution to send encrypted messages to EMS names or to addresses in the network. After we provided the MVP, we started to focus on the protocol. And the protocol is now focused as a community protocol, it's completely open source, it's free for all, and we invite a lot of uh, protocols and solutions to integrate it, and it's also to, uh, to form the protocol, so that we can build together a community protocol which can act as a layer zero and layer one protocol for messaging. Why both? Not layer one, you can use the protocol to directly build your messaging solution to one and they are sure that you can have, if you have an existing solution, you can integrate it very easily. Yeah. We are using ENS as registry for it, so that we have in ENS the information how to connect and how to encrypt messages. Besides ENS, we also are able to integrate any other registry made on another chain, on layer 2, or even on central service with CCIP, the cross chain or interoperability protocol we can integrate it into national registry. Then we have this decentralized network of nodes which act as three layers between the sender and the receiver. Yeah, and this, yeah, everyone can run such a node or use existing nodes. So that's why we have a good decentralized network of these nodes already available. And the mentions, we are using ENS as this registry. Why we are using ENS? It is a commonly used DEP, and it's easy, as I mentioned, to integrate other solutions using CCIP. And why do we need such a decentralized application? Because we need a central registry. That is, it sounds a bit strange that we need a central registry, and that's why we need a decentralized application, so that everyone can use it without permission and without a control of others. So how does it work? We have we have this network of delivery service nodes, and if a sender wants to send a message to someone, he will go to the registry, get information how to encrypt and how to deliver a message. Then selects one or another delivery service node, sends the message, the message is stored. I, I, I will show you in detail in a few things, and then the receiver can uh, get the can, can get the message from this really delivery service. And also these delivery services can act as gateway to other networks so that the user can send it to the delivery service and other delivery services and check in the message into another network. How is decentralization working? So everyone, as I said, can run a store of their own delivery service node or can connect to existing nodes, maybe by taking a service or because it's connected to the, this network and so on. And with this, if some of these nodes are not available, I just take another one. And yeah, for that should be possible, you have a good decentralized network which scales by design. And if we need more, uh, more capacity network, 
we just can run more delivery services and by this making the network yeah, growing with the demands. Yeah, as I said before, it's also very easy to use it as layer zero protocol, which means you can use, if you have a protocol or own service, may the be server files or even assembly service, you can plug in in the grid by having a delivery service which injects the received messages in the other network. And if you you need also a registry for your information and to whatever where you have organized this registry, you can integrate it in the ENS on a subdomain, you can see the IP and with this it's available for all to have this uh, connected communication. And in the other direction it works in the same way. You send the message out of your network over only key layer and then it's injected in the into the network as well. This I will show only very short. Today we will only have to work on a very small portion of it because it's, we don't have too much time. So we have this blockchain layer, which is the rest, is used for the registry in ENS or in others. You can see the IP to integrate it, as I mentioned. Then we have this protocol layer, where the message transport protocol is the essential part to make the transfer from A to B for a message. And then there are a lot of different protocol extensions for use cases and messaging as you need it. Not, not all of them are already implemented, so none of them are as well in the production or in discussion with the community how it's needed and how it can be used. And then we have the application there where we have the interface to existing uh, networks. This is in the moment now. We, we have evidence published and we are in discussion with a lot of protocols and services that is start now to integrate. And we have on the other side these DM3 messenger components. So our intention at the moment, even if we have a reference information, is not to provide a messenger. We are a protocol, we are providing these components so that you can use it in your applications. And today we want to talk about these embedded widgets so, and, and see how it is possible to use such a widget in an app with one line of code, we have fully secure features messaging in your application. Yeah, let me show how the work is. I am doing the time that we don't go over the time. I only show it very quickly, and but it should show how this decentralized protocol works. So if Alice wants to send a message to Bob, she starts by looking into the registry, what are the and what are the keys and the delivery service of Bob, and also what are the information from the delivery service. Then the message is encrypted and, and sent to the delivery service of Bob. Here it is stored for the time until Bob gets the message. Okay. Bob, might be at Bob. Bob might be offline at this time, and so that's why the message is, is stored in the cache. Fully encrypted still, and the delivery service is not able to decrypt it. Can only decrypt the envelope to see who is the message addressed to and what are the metadata, but nothing more. So, yeah, this I already mentioned. So, and then if Bob wants to, um, to receive the message, he asks the delivery service, Is there any message for me? And if so, he receives the encrypted envelope with all the information, still fully encrypted. Then again, also Bob goes to the registry, gets the information, what are the keys from the delivery service, what are the keys from the sender, then he again decrypts the message, and after Bob stored the message in his app, where everyone else is, it might be local, or in cloud service, or decentralized, like in S, it depends on the application. The user is informed so that the message can be turned So nothing is left in the network from its communication. And we have a direct communication from LS to Bob. Right? And completely encrypted, completely secure. Privacy, we have the privacy now for the content to have privacy also in the metadata. There are protocol extensions that we don't send it directly, but today this is not important. Yeah, 
Now let's go to a part where we can do something together. To build an application to integrate the three components so that we can use this different protocol for managing. So we have these embedded widgets. The version I present now is the better version. There will be a new version given later, so that is, it is completely white label, so you can configure it how you want. And often there's a question here, yeah, why are we operating these components? Is this something we want to have them in our service? No, not at all. So these components have the intention to enable fully decentralized and fully interoperable messaging. So if you have a website, for instance, let's say it's a website of a business, and you, have, you want to have a component where people can write messages to some colleagues. Then you can use such a component, which is connected to the entry network. They can directly log in your site, log in with, uh, with their signature, and send a message right away. So this is how other messengers are working as well. But I don't know if you have used these in, uh, embedded messengers from other sites. So I use it sometimes, and if I don't receive the answer right now, I forget it. Because I, often there's no notification, so only if I go back to the site, and hopefully uh, my browser remembers that this is I, then I see the answers. With Team 3, we can do much better. Then we, we also we start with these anonymous keys. So you can directly sign in with your wallet and send a message. But at this time, it's the anonymous. You have to go back to the time. But we also, we call this limited scope profiles, you can have these limited scope profile and connect it to your main inbox. But in whatever application you're using, maybe the DM3 reference application or any other DM3 compatible messenger, you can connect this messaging window to your, uh, to your uh, home messenger. Which means you have all the information, all the communications on one place. And if you are, if this is an important message, for instance, I contacted my solo provider because with the detecting what something was not working, and after three months of waiting, I didn't look at it anymore. And after a while, I discovered oh, that they did send a message, it would, would be helpful, but yeah, I was not in this communication. So with Team 3, I would connect it to my inbox, and if they are entering, I have to register it in my inbox. And I, I have it connected to my communication, uh, communication center. So today, we want, I will show you how to build and uh, take any React app and integrate Team 3 in this app. So if you want to follow it, so I have a gift to can scan this QR code and directly yeah, get to the to these informations. Otherwise I will do it now on screen so that we also can do it together. But some data are, have to be copied so that's why it's easier if you get this this GIS page directly. So I think these slides will also be uh, published later so that everyone can, uh, can then yeah, do it by the later. Okay, let, let, me, let me start here. So first, we, uh, so what we want to do, uh, okay, I have to, I have to see how I put it on. Screen. And let's put it stop the presentation here and put Yeah. 
So, so first, let's create a new a new React app. Here, I, I'm using Yarn. So, let's give it a name. So now the React app is created. So this is some magic done by React. So we I hope the internet is quick enough that we get all of this information. So what we have to do next? So next we have to add the DMG package. So you can use the GitHub right? repository as well. Team 3 is freely available. Everyone can download, fork, do whatever you want. You also can, of course, because it's open source by computer if you have some things you want to add to it. Yeah, so after we have finished the building the React app, it takes some seconds. Then we will import the, the NPM package. While this is, I, I will be give some information to this component. So right now this component is, yeah, is an early version. We will provide a new version later, which is completely configurable to your device. So then you can put it on the site as a messenger. You can messenger out of it, but you also can have only single messaging windows added to your site. So some okay, we are all almost finished. So now we are finished, we, uh, we go. So we go into the virtual pad, but now and now I install the the package by yarn at d3.s minus react. So now we have the, the package available so that we can start using these components. So I hope you are you can can you hear me as well? Better the three hands. So after we have added the, the package, we have to, uh, to add an environment. So what we are not doing today is setting up a delivery service. Well, it, of course, everyone can do this by that. You can run your own delivery service and configure it as, as, the, uh, as your communication relay. To make it easy today, we, we just Using the existing delivery, the existing delivery service from uh, from DM3, so this is this is the delivery service of the the better version. So I trust. Copy this in your case. You have the same information as well. So it's it's the while the while it's running, I uh, can open the folder. I'm going to go into workshop now. I trust this code. So, and, and now I uh, add a new file, the dot end file, where I uh, add this information. So now, now it, it, it should be finished. So now we, we have uh, a running or existing reactor. If we uh, start it, we will start. And then it starts. 
both is before F, nothing is only until now. So now let's go back to, uh, to our application. And first, we have to import the ENS3 package. We have to import ENS3. Oh, I just copy it. We are adding now D3 to, to this package. And now we can uh, we can add the D3 widget. So as I said, one thing like of course we have now this D3 package we have added. So I, I just uh, put it on the end of this application. So what we have inside the now is we have a default service URL and it says you can run your own DM3 services in the background. Here I connect to an existing one. So because beside the message transport protocol, we have also the service for the message storage, which is at this connect to but yeah, this can be done in any other location as well, but in this case I use this. So now it's again compiling. So again we now do a go to the site. We, we have the DM3 component in it. So what do I need to connect? So I in DM3 I need to connect let's go to another browser. I don't want to do this browser for other users. So what I, I need to do to connect to DM3? Yes, I, I have to uh, select my wallet and, and to, uh, to sign a message. Yeah, let, let's take, well, I can, let's take it for a new account, a workshop. So now I have created a new address, so, and now I can, so I have to uh, connect it. And, and, and maybe once people create it, it's not connected, so now it's connected, and now I can sign in. So this is the, the work of what happens normally when I connect with DM3. I have this message which shows that now I am connecting. And this is only one time the message to connect to the DM3 uh, uh, message storing service because we are, we are connecting to a quality service right now. And after I did this, I am in, inside the applications. You see, some of the pictures are not yet loaded, but I which copy it into the directory, then is in the end, which are loaded as well. So, and, and now I'm finished. I have a fully loading message in the creation, fully encrypted inside my application. So, if I want to send a message, maybe to myself, so I can give the, the ENS name of the receiver. So now it's evaluated. So what happened in the background is now we connected to the DM3 network. We connected to ENS, received the information how to encrypt the message, and we also have the information how to um, how to deliver the message. So now I can send a message, and if I go to my other browser, so here is my uh, yeah. Here I am logged in with sbhooks.eth with my account and now the message is processed in background and after a while it will appear here. And if you have done it on your computer, you also can directly send the message to this. It's completely integrated in this, in this application as well. Okay, I see the time is running. Let's 
it, it skips some part. So, so what if we can do as well? There are some reasons you can have it as embedded, so like it is now or as overlay. This is something you can discover by yourself. Let's let's wrap up a little bit how this works. So with Team Three, oh here we also have the have this in the development slides. We have a lot of references. So all the resources are free available. As I said before, we invite everyone to take it, forget to use it, or to contribute, and especially also that it's an open and community protocol. We are very open for communication. If you see some points which should be added or changed, yeah, nothing is in stone. Let's discuss it. Let's build it together in the future. Yeah. What we have discussed today, and with the free managing, we can solve a lot of these problems which we have now in the Web 1 and Web 2 messaging. In the Web 3 messaging world, we need to do better than it is done in the Web 2 world, where we should not start to have silos again and have different applications which are not interactive, and we should focus on interoperability in the very beginning. Now, all the issues are small. Now is the time to start with the community and then we are build this connected ecosystem. I also talked about that E3 can use this layer one, and you can use it in your application as we did today. You can use it also as layer zero protocol to use it as gateway to your protocol, your service, so that we can build this connected ecosystem. And these embedded components are also available for all applications and that give applications without any of those secure encrypted messaging in this connected ecosystem. And as I mentioned, I think this is very important for the future that these components support the value support in the future these limited scope profiles so that you can have messaging on your website and the user can decide to connect it to his or her inbox and by a simple service message. Okay. My time is almost over. On any question we can or should discuss. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe the microphone. Uh, is this only for DNS services? No, it's not. So we are using, we are starting with the ENS community, yes. But we also support other registries. So the, the best thing is to integrate the, any other registry using CCRB as a cross chain or a really new protocol into DNS. Mm -hmm. But in future we will also support other registries on other chains mm -hmm. which might be connected, might not. And if you need an old ecosystem in your system in, in, in the Bitcoin world or in any other chain, and then you can do it. Yeah. It simply needs to change the, the how to uh, access the profiles. Mm -hmm. But if you want to be connected with the whole industry world, it needs to be a need one place and yeah, we prefer to have at least two DNS. But maybe we are also thinking about having a, a super registry where we also can have yeah. other registries so that we have this connected to the same. Other question? Okay. Yeah, so for those uh, is it, is it uh, will be like, like this call, I'm connected to some server and then I, then I can communicate with the community in this server. And if I need to communicate with others at other server, so I'm connected to the community, will it be something like this? So, so the question was, if I have to connect to other servers, or the two uh, uh, so, so that's why we say there must be one central registry. Now to have a connected network, we need one registry. And with ENS, we have this registry where we can connect other registries too. Yeah, so for instance, if you have a registry run on Optimism, yeah, you just can have a subdomain in ENS, where you using CCIP, connect your Optimism registry to the supplement. All the users have supplements there. Or if you're running it on a centralized service, you also can use CCIP to integrate your centralized registry into a 
the DNS registry. So, and this is how it works now. As I mentioned, we are thinking about having a super registry where it says, okay, here you have an interface, but you can have the registry on DNS, which is the main registry, but there might be other sub registries you can access also. But right now, we think it's the best approach for the internet to grow if we have one place and that's like connecting it to something in ES might be the, the easiest approach also to, for any service to connect with. Thank you, thank you. Any other questions? If this is not the case, then thank you very much. Yeah, let's build together the communication of the future. Let's build on top of Team 3 and all the other nice messaging workloads we have in the Web3 space and connect each other and yeah, do something what is at the moment in the Web2 world not possible. Yeah, that we can be connected over all of the boundaries of our applications and then yeah, also go to the Web2 world. It's also easy for them to integrate in this network so that we hopefully in the near future get a connected network where the user decides what is the best app for my application or for my usage? And I don't care what the other one is using, I can send a message and use the messages. Thank you very much. <laughs>